Welcome to Toffee TV. Well, today I am delighted to say I am joined by Matt Slater from The Athletic. For the last two or three years, he has been uh, digging deep into all things Everton off the pitch, including Farad Mashiri, PSR, points deductions, triple seven, and now the takeover from the Freaking Group. Matt, welcome to Toffee TV. Hi, how are you? I'm I'm all right. I'm I'm looking forward to speaking to you because I've been listening to you for a very long time on uh, Everton PSR uh, takeovers. This take this takeover in the summer. Now the takeover. Now it's been a couple of weeks since um, the the freaking group announced that they would be buying Everton Football Club. Obviously, we've got to wait for everything to be signed off and everything to happen. But I mean, just on Everton, what it, what's it what's it been like covering Everton for the last couple of years? That's, that's a really good question. Uh, well, look, um, just to explain a little bit what, about what I do. So I do, obviously, I'm a sports journalist, but for whatever reason, and luck, accident, what, there was an opportunity, I don't know, the type of person I am I, I've tended not to do much sport I sort of do the bits in between the games and the matches and the races and what have you the, the rows the, the political stuff the money so for football you know things like takeovers are obviously bread and butter anything to do with the league so your PSR cases mm. rules so when I kind of start covering a club if you like it's nearly always bad news it's nearly <laughs> all my relationships with clubs and club fan bases are because something's gone wrong and over like i say it's been i've been doing this a while but i feel like i've been doing sort of only this for sort of 10 15 years maybe sort of 15 years or so kind of started with pompey really yeah and in that time i've really like had sort of periods where I've been covering a club for a long time. So Pompey, Sheffield Wednesday, Derby, Wigan, Plymouth for a long time, way back, you know, you guys, and so on and so on. And 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 it kind of you get very close, you sort of you learn everything about the club, and then you move on. Mm. Uh, now normally it's a bit quicker. Like yours yours has been a proper <laughs> saga. <laughs> and there have been some like moments when I've been really worried, really worried you know, like mm. kind of Barry Macclesfield type worried um, about you guys. I mean, it's, it's it's obviously different when you're in the Premier League, you know, yeah. because it is post Pompey and even Rangers a little bit, which I did mm. too. It's quite hard for a Premier League club to properly fail, to crash, you know, crash through the system because there is so much revenue from the TV. And there's, and because you're attractive as well, there's always someone, there's always someone that's interested. So I wasn't like, that terrified that I was reporting on a potential berry, but but it, there was a, there was a, there were times when it was a chance. Mm. I think the real thing with you, the real thing that's been interesting about covering Everton is is one your fan base is is is, is large, and very passionate. That like you're not the first, like like Derby was a bit like that. Yeah, and 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 I mean this in a nice way, a little bit, a little bit maybe. Sort of insular is the wrong word. You, you, you're quite a tight knit bunch. Mm. There's sort of distrust of mainstream media. You tend to like news coming from Evertonian sources. Someone like me appearing on the scene, and I'm not not just me. There's a kind of a distrust, which is fine. Look, like you're not the only fan base like that. So I think that's been interesting. You, I think the way your club was set up from the top as well was a bit like that. There were kind of Evertonian mm. voices, and what well, wouldn't listen to that and well, that's not an Evertonian so forget that yeah that was a bit odd I must admit like when clubs have been in crisis before the club itself has often been a bit more helpful a bit more accessible yeah yours, yours frankly hasn't yeah and I think that as I said that is something that's come from the top mm. um so that's been a funny thing um you know but but and the, and the other thing is that yours your takeover story because of your owner being problematic and having lots of slightly unique and unusual issues the takeover has been really messy mm. it hasn't been like if i was to liken it to some of the efl clubs where the complications is all just to do with what am i buying the losses are like whoa is this thing worth 
more than a pound? Where, where, where are we at? Is it is it really administration? Is that is that the only way that anyone would be interested in this? Picking up the pieces with all the debt rinsed. Yours has been more about you know, what does Mashiri want? Who, who 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 really owned it? The loans he's taken. Yeah. And then because you were a distressed asset, but an attractive asset, the kind of people that were poking around and trying to buy you. And I think that, and again, there's some issues really around Mashiri's decision-making. You know, let's be honest, I'm, I'm mainly talking about 777. <laughs> you know, tri the 777 yeah. stuff, I'm sorry. You know, we could do a, a long, a long time on that. But, we, but thankfully, we're moving on for triple seven. But that, but that was a big chunk of this story, right? So if, yeah. I, I feel like I've been reporting on you properly for about two, two years or so. Yeah, but about a year of that was triple seven. Well, we'll come back to triple seven in a minute. I, I want to. I just want to go into the damn freak and stuff in the freak and group. But before I do that, I just want to say I know what you were hinting at there. You have took some stick from Evertonians, and that's so, one of, the, and so. that's one of, that's one of the reason I wanted to get you on because 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 I, I I I do listen to you and and what you've done so far is is has been really good. So I, there, there has been you are right. There's been a, there's been mistrust from Evertonians because there has been that many things written about Evan in the last two years and some of the things that have been written have been um have been haven't been great. In fact in the summer I had to get a journalist from a national radio station on in a similar to position where you are now and basically put him right. And in the end luckily I did. He he, he went on radio and said some talked about fire sales and how we were gonna have to sell everybody and how we wouldn't get uh fifty million for, for half of our squad and all this kind of thing. And I had to get him on and calm him down a little bit. And in the end he he sort of agreed in the end that he, he had said the wrong thing. I'm not, but you you haven't done that and, and that's one of the reasons why I did want to speak to you. Um but there's been so much mistrust, you're right, of of it from Evertonians because it has been such a struggle, it really has. And it's been uh, you know, there's been you are again, you're right about the club. You're not getting any information out, you're not getting the right kind of information out. Um the triple seven thing was sold to us as the saviors and and quite frankly from the start of that I just smelt a rat. Um they they tried they I remember you know they came to they came to us and they briefed us and how they told us that was all gonna be amazing and I sat and listened to it and just thought I can't say the words. I don't think I'm legally allowed to say the words of what I thought they were. Uh, but, but I think you be able to now. You're, you're, you're getting pretty close to being able to say what you like. Well, it begins with P, and the second part scheme. So <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say on them. I'll wait till I wait till the the yacht and the and and the the the, the jet have been sold yet before okay. I really go into um, how I feel about them. But you so it has been, and I and I know you have been at the raw end of some of that, and even that some of that recently you've been on the raw end of it. Um, so yeah. I mean I can't apologise for the. Well, the last thing it was I did wrong. I can't remember it. <laughs> I I get the same stuff. So uh, it you know it's been tough. I'm sure it's been tough as an Everton. It's been tough covering Everton for the last two yeah. or three years. So as someone who's seen as being on the outside, who might be look been looking to scare I mean, listen, I heard you talking a couple of years ago, PSR, and what we were going to get, and you said we were yeah. going to get three three points, and I was going mad at you saying we were going to get three points, and then when we got, three, I think I said three to six. You said three to six. What you said, what you said was. It would yeah. be six, but normally what happens in the EFL is it down, yeah. they'd make it three. And I was like, well, three? Because at that time, yeah. we weren't getting told anything. And we, no. we were like, points deductions? Are you joking? So when that 10-point yeah. well, deduction came... The club came got out, angry with me. The club got angry with me. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, they do, because that's, that's, what, that's what they tend to do, or certainly the regime that was there. They got angry with people telling the truth, rather than the club saying to us, know what, this this mightn't be great. We just want to let a few of you know if you want to filter that yeah. out maybe to the fan base. But we, we honestly believe we were getting nothing because there was everything was, it'll be all right. So sometimes it's not the worst thing in the world to be told what is actually going on. So you, you've done that to the best of your ability and that's why I wanted you get, to get you on. But um, the, freak, <laughs> <laughs> the freaking group, obviously... Yes. They were seen as the big saviors. In I mean, I I think it was the I think it was the fourteenth. I even remember the date. It was the fourteenth of June. And I remember mm. getting announced, um, and suddenly everything just felt really, really rosy, and felt like it was it was all going to change, and some of our targets were going to change, and it was all going to be great. And then within a couple of weeks, it all fell down. Um, 
what has brought what has brought them back to the table and 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 signed the deal, which hopefully will see them as the new owners of Everton Football Club. Yeah, it's a really, really good question, and like I'm going to say straight right out from the bat, I, I don't absolutely know. I don't know for certain what brought them back. I've got a pretty good idea. Um, I think you're right. June June was interesting. That, that the fact that they kind of emerged, they they were basically the best mm. type of owner you were going to get post triple seven. You know, to get a a genuinely wealthy person with experience of running a sports team and that could sort of act quickly. Mm-hmm. Perfect. It was it was such a result for you, and I could totally understand um, the crushing disappointment. You know, when three four weeks ago it's sort of taken away from you. Yeah. So we if we explore what scared them off in July, it was it was really two things. It was some underlying, I think, unease around the Mashiri Usmanov relationship that had been a problem for basically all, particularly North American potential investors. They're very very worried about sanction busting. It's a big deal for like yeah. institutional money in the states. It's a big deal for here, but let's say. But because most of the money at the moment is North American, it's a big deal. Yeah. So there was some there was an underlying concern, but the really big one was the triple seven headache, and really it was just because triple seven was falling apart. Mm. Its main backer, ACAP, was kind of taking hold of assets. ACAP's fighting its own battles. Triple Seven and ACAP are being sued by Leaden Hall. I know most Everton fans have kind of got their heads around this now. There's this sort of there's, there's various fights going on, <laughs> and it's really all around control of Triple Seven assets. And and that loan, those those series of loans that built up to about two hundred million pounds, is an asset on someone's mm-hmm. balance sheet. ACAP are saying it's theirs. Leaden Hall are saying, well, maybe it is, but you know, you lot potentially, and we're having a legal fight about it. Over six hundred million. So just. Mm-hmm. Whoa well, there. Well, you know, don't start disposing any assets yet, because if you do, we're first in line. So that's 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 the tension there. Mm. And I and I just got the impression that the freaking sort of looked at this and looked and always mindful of how much does Everton really cost. So I go back to my first answer about often with these EFL stories or non-league stories where it's like, oh my God, what am I really buying here? What what property do they own? What players have they got? I can see their debts. Does the debt equal the asset? You know, you weren't quite there, but you were getting very close to your what they call your enterprise value, which is the value of your shares, which is whatever Mashiri was going to take for his however much money he's poured in, mm. and the, the total of your debts. You were and you and depending on who you talk to, you, you were there or thereabouts. It, there wasn't much difference between your enterprise value and the potential secured debt that someone was going to have to sort out. So dealing with the triple seven two hundred million was is really any anyone coming to the table would have been like, okay, well it looks like I'm going to have to pay off that for certain Mashiri can do one um, um the rights of media funding guys i've got to kind of deal with them because they have got security on goodison park the bank mm. account the, you know they've got a lot of security triple seven right they're they're like you know the last of the party they, they, they it's kind of secure but what's it secured on they're definitely like the most junior debt there i'm gonna yeah. knock them down but who am I knocking down? Who am I negotiating with? Am I negotiating with ACAP? Am I negotiating with Leiden Hall? You know, is it even worse than that? That the whole thing there, I don't know who I'm negotiating with. I'm waiting for a court to settle this. Could there be, you know, could this triple seven story really go like south? And that's the proceeds of crime. You know, that money that was lent to Everton, is there going to be, oh my God, we don't want to be caught in some, you know, court battle in the States for years and years. So I think they just walked away. They just thought, you know what? There are lots of Premier League clubs for sale at the moment. Another one will come round. We got stuff going on at Roma. This is too complicated. Mm. Now, so what changed? What changed between mid July and then coming back? I think their lawyers went. You know what? That Usmanov Mashiri stuff. I don't think it's a problem, right? It's not. It, Mashiri's not being sanctioned. Mashiri wants to go. We're okay. Mm. The triple seven stuff. I think they kind of kept working. Like, well, do you know what? That court case with Leiden Hall is going to proceed. There's an injunction. But the injunction is not, like, so restrictive if ACAP bring an idea to court and the, and the judge says, yeah, that's fine. You can you can sell that football team. You can realise that debt. Yeah, it's fine. There's nothing. There's no problem with, with ACAP settling up early with, with whoever wants to come in and buy Everton. Maybe we can do a deal with them. 
So I think those sort of things happened. People kept working on it and kept working on solutions. I think John Texter came along. Yeah. Now, I think one of the reasons why I upset some Everton people is that I very early said, I don't think John Texter is going to buy your club. Yeah. Now, what I thought was quite interesting with the angry reaction to me saying <laughs> that was this idea that I was just sort of wandering in and going, oh, who's this bloke? Yeah. Um, I don't think he's going to do it. I'm, I don't mean to brag, but not only did I like break a number of stories that we've already discussed, like the arrival of Freakin, the exit of Freakin. I've been talking to Texter for about three, four years. I, I you know, broke his arrival in football. Mm. I've been talking to him that entire week, that strange, insane week <laughs> where he asked me not to report that he was coming back in for Everton and then proceeds to go to Mars, uh, to Le to Leon yeah. and hold a press conference <laughs> where he admitted it and got himself in trouble, by the way, with the French stock exchange for, yeah. uh, you know, saying too much about, the, you know, I don't want to get into too many complexities with text there. And then giving an interview to uh, Adam Myers in his hotel. I'm yeah. like, hold on a minute, John, you know, you told me not to report all this. <laughs> so, you know, when I then, you know, join the party and say, yeah. right, here's his plan. I'm sorry. One of the, his plan's not going to work for X, Y, and Z. He's got to sell Palace. Mm. So, oh, who, you know, what are you on about? Trying to sort of almost like scupper someone else's story. I'm like, well, it's not quite how it works, but yeah, you know, and I, and I have obviously discussed all this with John. He's, he's asked me to be off the record. I feel like I, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> we're, we're okay. We've got over it. It didn't, it didn't work. Yeah. Anyway, so that's why I thought that was Everton fans last time around. Yeah, that's because basically yeah. you were you were telling the truth ultimately. Oh, it's, it, 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 anyway, it, it smokes. Did, did it? Did it? Did that alone smoke freaking out? I mm. don't know. I think it had a. I think it had an impact. I think it sort of was like, do you know what? And the other thing, sorry, I should say about freaking, of course, which you know and your Evertonians know, is that he was sitting pretty. He was in the box seat anyway. Yeah. Because he had replaced the MSP loan, he'd mm. actually topped it up to sort of 200, I think it's a little bit more now. Um, and he had the most, he had the best security of all. He had yeah. security on Bramley Moore. Yeah. He was a little bit in. It was like, yeah. He he had walked away, but he hadn't slammed the door. And of course, he'd done the same thing with Roman. Done before, yeah. Him. So he was, a, he was the best secured creditor. I think his lawyers were carrying on working on the deal. His son's quite important in this, as you, you're probably going to find out. Mm. He kind of runs the sort of football operations. Um, Texter kind of comes in and sort of reminds him, oh, right, you know, there's, I suppose there's a slight chance. I mean, I think I, think I gave John some Texter about 10% chance of doing it. And then I think the fact is like, well, do you know what? There's a, there's a real chance this is going to end up with me anyway at the end of the – and I think the other thing, sorry, I should I – should, and this is where we get into football now, finally. <laughs> if he was going to end up with Everton, let's get on with it, shall we? Yeah. Like I, I think I need to be in place before the January transfer window because Everton could well be looking at another relegation battle. So, you know, let's do if I'm going to do this, let's do it. Mm. And also, Everton have got a manager who's out of contact at the end of the year, a director of football is out of contact at the end of the year. And as it stands, Everton will have 12 contracted players oh, to the club right. next season i mean they are yeah. they are they are massive decisions need to be made and they need to be made now and if you're if you're the sort of guy who's thinking right i've i've been really smart here i've kind of defended my money i may well pick up this premier league club for for, for peanuts next summer oh but they might not be a premier league club mm. well i'm not so smart then am i yeah so i think i think a, all of those things got him back in the room. And then what's quite interesting is I am I am told, and I have no reason to believe to disbelieve these people, it actually happened really fast. Mm. I think I think the deal was done like three, four days. I think it was done on Sunday night, and I think it started to leak out Monday morning and it was announced, the club announced it Monday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, two o'clock. 
we were live. It was it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> we were it was uh, it was brilliant to, to to obviously finally get the news. But um, I mean, obviously the seven 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 thing was an absolute disaster. It just dragged on and dragged on. But just on the the obviously the loans and and what is yeah. in court. I mean, it's very yeah. it is very complicated. Do you see any issues with that? Because I, I mean, I've, there's people scaremongering on yeah. that as well um, yeah. about the deal. And there has been reports this week that Everton wouldn't actually have to pay two hundred million pound back. In fact, there's a figure of 66 million yeah. i don't know if it's dollars or pounds and then there's a i think it is there's dividends later on after seven yeah. years i yeah. mean can yeah. you know is that something you've heard yeah so if we if we start with the basic premise that a cap let's, let's call them a cap now they've, they've taken control of it mm. are owed 200 million plus interest which they haven't started charging that was all part of the original deal and that there's going to be there's quite a lot of interest that's going to be added to that at the end potentially you know it was, it was 10 percent plus interest rate right so there's, there's quite a bit to come on top of that but it wasn't due for repayment until 2026 so triple seven you know were very confident i'll give them that genuinely thought they were going to take this club on they were going to load a lot more debt on you this was the start of it so um that is an asset on triple seven's balance sheet as, as I said, they are under pressure themselves. So it sits there as a potential asset. Right? So that's important to them. Anyone new coming in and looking at this going, right, well, I'm going to knock, knock Mashiri down to a pound. Um, I'll try it on with rights and media funding. They'll say, get stuffed, and I'll have to pay them. Uh, I'm already, freaking, I'm already owed 200, so that's fine. I owe myself, whatever, I can just restructure that no problem that lot i'm going to knock that lot down mm. triple seven but you've got this problem the a cap are like no you're not because that that number is important to us all right you can say well can we renegotiate can we can we pay you like never no you can't do that because leaden hall wouldn't let you do that mm. all right can we what can we do about that number that that that, make, that makes it more affordable for us now to buy this club so we can put more dollars, pounds on the pitch but doesn't kind of ruin your balance sheet. So there's a negotiation to be had around how much money ACAP want straight away to sort of go away and how much they're willing to kind of wait, you know, pay me later. And there have been some various ideas proposed. I, you know, I, I heard that basically freaking, you know, it was initially, well, I'll tell you what, how about we pay you half and we just say no more about it. And no, you can't do that because we sort of need, we need that sort of 200 on our balance sheet. All right, well, how about we pay you a third and we will give you preferred equity, which is like debt that can become shares uh, in the club. Yeah, that's quite attractive. Problem there, though, is Leadenhall were like, no, 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 no. We, we want you to, to settle that debt, but we want their, them to give us cash. So we're not having that. And then, of course, there would also be like knock-on, I think, effects at the Premier League, regulatory, you know, impacts. Hold on. So, wait, ACAP might become a shareholder of Everton. Oh, God, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to have a look <laughs> at that. So there's complexities around that. So there, the, the last... The last deal I heard, which I think I might have reported about 10 days ago, and I, and I know that Josie Mara have fleshed it out, is 66, so basically a third up front, and we'll do the rest, we'll, we'll just convert it into a combination of payment in kind notes, which is which is like a, like a loan, but it gives the loanee, so it would give Everton a bit more flexibility about when you pay it back. It tends to be higher interest, but it does give, it gives you I want to pay you. I want to pay you now, so there's no early redemption penalty like mm. you would put on a house or a mortgage, or we'll pay you. I don't know, two years, three years, a combination of those, and then what they call like an equity kicker. These are these warrants. This is like the sweetener for the lender. Where you say you, you might be able to convert some of this money into shares. So that is the proposal that's that has gone to this court, that is in the process of going to this court. And it's it's for 
it's for ACAP and Leadenhall to hammer it out and the judge to go, yeah, okay, fine, as long as you, as long as you two parties are agreed with that. But I, I suspect that deal might have to change a little bit. I suspect there's still a bit more negotiation, really, on Leadenhall will want more cash. Mm. And they, they'll be uneasy around these potential shares because their beef is, well, we think you owe you owe us, you know, we, we think that that debt should be asked, to be honest. I mean, because you owe us so much money. We don't want shares in an English football team. We just want our money back. So shares are no use to us. So I think there's a little bit more negotiation there. That when you say sort of scaremongering, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I think people have pointed out mm. that Leadenhall have sort of gone, yeah, it's all very well for the Freakins and for Mashiri and for everyone else to say this is a good deal. But no one's actually asked our opinion yet. And there mm. is a process for asking our opinion. That is to go to this court and tell us about it. And, you know, when that announcement was made on Monday, no one had. And I checked that it was true, that yeah. no one had. And what we've had since then is the beginning of that process, an exchange of letters between ACAP's lawyers. And you've, some of them have been leaked. You've seen them. And there's 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 a, like another row going on. ACAP are trying to have the, the terms of the injunction loosened up a bit. And they've lost that. They're losing that fight. I think I think this Everton deal will be fine because I don't think Eleven Hall. I think the judge will just go. Well, this is regular business, right? We're we're not saying that ACAP can't function. We're just saying that any kind of disposal of asset stuff, they do just have to run it past us to make sure to to to, to, to basically check that Leaden Hall know, Leaden Hall knows what's going on because what we haven't resolved yet, the judge will be saying is whether this will owe you any money at all. I haven't made my mind up on that. Yeah. All I'm saying is they might. So that, I know it's a complicated answer, but that, <laughs> I, I I genuinely think it's going to be fine. I think it is fair, some of the reporting I've seen, just to point out that it it's not as smooth and as, well, it's fine. If, if Everton says it's fine, then it's fine. It It's going to be okay. Yeah, because it has been reported today that they want to be in by um, December. Do, do you think that will be the case? Well, there's a few things going on at once. So I, I think the the if we go back to the triple seven, nine month, ten month, whatever it was, obviously the hold up there was the regulatory approval from the Premier League. And I know Everton fans don't want to hear any praise of the Premier League, but I would suggest the Premier League did you quite a good job on that. Oh, one. hugely, hugely. Right. So as long as we acknowledge that. <laughs> I don't think you can have any problems with the Premier League saying doing their bits of work on the freakins, right? As as I know they don't call it that anymore, but the fit and proper, right? There, mm. there is no fit and proper problem. But what one, they're very rich. They they you know that they, they have regulated businesses. They have they've passed, you know they, they they run Roma. They sit on the European Club Association board. Uh, they're on one of the UEFA committees. These guys are sort of solid football citizens. The Premier League hasn't got an issue here, so that's fine. The FA bit and the financial conduct authority stuff is always really it's box sticky stuff. It's just sorting out this little bit over here. Mm. I, I, I don't. I think once Leadenhall, ACAP, the judge get their head around this, this this happens tomorrow. You know, it's yeah. one of those sort of things, right? Well, okay, we just need to. The lawyers need to exchange bits of paper on on the deal we've done. How much we're paying up front? How much we're paying later? Are we paying the totality? What we're we doing with the interest? Are we changing the terms? All of that is probably done. Framework, you know, all the framework of that is done. I, I think it is realistic that they're in place by Christmas. Mm. I'm going I'm to couch it. I think I initially said I think they should be in by mid early December. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go mid December. Good. <laughs> so yeah, good. Um, just I mean, what 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 have you actually made of them as club owners? Obviously the own obviously the own role. We all know that. I mean, what have you made of them there? Well, look, I I'm gonna I always bow to sort of you know I, I'm happy to like talk forever about things yeah. that i feel like i really know about but you know my, my colleague james Horcastle is is the is the is the dom on italian football so i i've spoken to him at length about it i i have observed roma um i've i i know who i think is going to be your chief executive i've seen her at work she's really good she's really highly rated within the industry um so you know you're you Evertonians can look up how Roma have got on and they they look from the outside and from yeah. what I hear they came with um, all the right all the right intentions they threw money at it mm. 
they achieved some early successes. Um, they've, they've certainly done really well in Europe. I think it's like four semi-finals, two finals, and a win. Mm. That Europe, your UEFA coefficient is ridiculous. Unfortunately, they have struggled to beat sixth in Syria, which has had a big impact on on, on their finances. You know, the, the freakings have, 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 have borne those losses. They've got a real stadium problem there, but that's like yeah. not unique to them. It's you go around the Syria, they've nearly all of them have got stadium problems. Yeah, yeah, it's the big problem with uh, Italian football, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and Rome, you know, you throw in the added complexities of Rome. So there's, there's, you know, I've made that joke a few times. So, so, so there's, there's, it's a mixed picture. But if I was an Evertonian, yeah. I'd be thinking, yeah, more, more, more right than wrong. Mm. They're, they're having a bit of a funny moment right now. Yeah. But that's just sometimes it's like a snapshot. So the snapshot right now isn't great. You know, they, they, they went big on Mourinho. They then, you know, like they fell out with Mourinho, not the first. Mm. Uh, and they go club legend. They get an immediate bounce but even towards the end of the last season that bounce is wearing out they then you know lack of patience with him this season it all looks a bit hasty it looks a little, it looks a bit confused this, you know the ceo gets carries the can it doesn't look great does it but have they spent money at roma oh my word have they tried to move ahead with the stadium project yes so you know the training ground etc etc they're they're multi-club people they are. They've, they've got this French team, which they haven't really done much with yet. Mm. Now, we can have a conversation about how you feel about that. And I think there will be at some point, hopefully, I mean, this would be a, a debate to be had over top dog in, in, yeah. in, the, in the empire and the stable. It's interesting. I, I, I mean, I, I look at I, I can't see them holding. I mean, this is just me as a, as a football fan. I just look at it and think, will they really hold on to Roma? Will, is there, you know, because it's just because of the whole because of the ecosystem of the Premier League and the American owners, and maybe this is another one to add to their little power grab in the Premier League, I, I look at it and think if they get, you know, once this is signed and sealed, how long will the appetite be to hold on to Roma? Be just, just because the Premier League is almost like a de facto Super League at the moment. You've got nah, you've got like eight, nine, 10, 11 teams now who are really powerful. Everton will want to add that onto that. And it's with the new stadium. I, d I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know what the, the, the obviously how much they love love Roma, but uh, yeah, it just, it just, the right question. It just feels to me at the moment that they might just grab hold of Everton, have the stadium already there and just think, why are we? Do we really want to keep pushing money into a club that is struggling? And because it is Rome, you know, and it has got that name, then you might get a, a an owner from the Middle East, very much like Paris yes. did, and well, they will and they will add to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you're you're absolutely right. We're on the same page. And in fact, prior to them kind of appearing on the scene here, I knew they were looking for an English club. I mean, I think I, I can't remember if I've written about this, but. They looked. They look quite hard at West Ham because um, there's a big there's a big minority stake available at West Ham. Yeah. Um, one of the stories of like say the last year to eighteen months has been their flirtation with Saudi Arabia. You know, the shirt sponsor. Mm. You know, I think they went over there to play. Many people thought they were sort of going to sell to the Saudis, and Saudi Arabia has a bit of an interest in capital cities you know it was it would it would be a prestige asset blah 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 it, it does appear this is even prior to you know the the Everton stuff coming along that that perhaps had gone away that maybe Saudi Arabia was more concentrated on the Saudi Pro League mm. seeing how Newcastle go you know just you know interested in golf the other stuff they're doing that this interest on maybe acquiring trophy assets in European football as an idea no nah, maybe not so, and the other thing I think is there's a lot of American owners in Syria as well, and, and a lot of them are getting quite frustrated. Mm. The TV deal is not great. They are, I think, struggling to sort of kind of get a grip of what they think the league needs to be doing, more commercial. Um, they, you know, they're getting there, but you know, there's, you know, there's sort of language, culture issues. Um, a lot of them are Italian Americans. That's, that's sort of what kind of brought them there. The freakings aren't. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely you can sort of build a case for well, why would they hold Roma if if mm. if what they really want to do is be in the top league? Yeah, they've yeah. They've, they've, they've achieved it. That at the moment, I thought it was really interesting that their first public stuff was so focused on Roma fans. 
the thing the only things they've really said on the record are we're staying we're committed you know which i thought was they went they didn't need to go that hard mm. unless they really meant it yeah so i do wonder if they do mean it and they talked they they've talked about a, a kind of looser multi club model mm. that we don't we're not going to like is you know have a preference we're not going to have an alpha dog top dog type thing we can run them separately yeah let, let, let's see how that goes mm. um you know others have others have tried that at some point there is a bit of a uefa issue um and also it's kind of a bit distracting i mean how much how much space does anyone have in their head and it's kind of expensive so we'll, we'll see but at the moment i think they can run both of you as kind of you know like not having a favorite child <laughs> i think the worry for them is is that you know i mean listen a lot's been said about everton fan base in the last couple of years and you've said it yourself you've had your little you've had yeah. your little share of that but we don't rock up at training grounds and start right. demanding the ceo comes out when when you know the first sign of trouble or, or right. when you sack a club legend obviously um yeah. so you wonder it's, how long... they turned up at her kid's school yeah, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Like, you know, I, I've heard Everton fans get a lot of grief about things they've done in the last few years, but or, you know, people being at train stations, having a go of players. But when you put it into context of things that happen in, 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 in Italy, you know, and certainly, as you, I mean, maybe they're getting the training ground done up just to get massive fences, I don't know. But um, the stuff that goes on over there, they might just look at it and go, why are we, why are we putting up with this kind of stuff? Yeah. Because I think, some of the, I think some of the stuff this week, or sorry, a couple of weeks ago, was probably, you know, fueled by the fact that they were buying Everton as well, thinking, well, hang on, you sacked our club legend, you you know, we're not sure where we are, and you've just bought a Premier League club, that means you're going to put money into them instead of putting money into the, to us. And if that happens next summer where, I don't know, Everton spends some money and they want it to be matched every single time, I can only see that leading to really bad issues. And and, and quite frankly, that ain't going to happen here. It ain't going to, after what we've put up with the last few years, Everton fans are, are just happy to have an owner who's got a little bit of money and runs a club right. Yeah, no, you're right. Look, what what will not wash in Rome is like the Pozzo, Udinese, Watford, mm. flip, flipping players, and which whichever club is sort of riding high, that they get the love. No, if you are the owner owner of Roma, you should be thinking Roma. Yeah. So that that is true, and I think it will be interesting to see how they manage that. At the moment, I think they can, and I think they are rich enough to do both. We, we shall see hmm. what in a year or two whether they still feel that. Yeah, um, you did mention to me before we came on here. You've been massively busy with the Manchester City case this week. It opens up so many, um, so many issues. Um, whether, whether the real or not, I don't know. Manchester City are saying one thing, Premier League are saying another. But uh, once again, Everton have been pulled into this. But yeah. also from, but, but from our point of view, we, there's a couple of interesting things from our point of view. So just from you know, there's a, there's a part of this which is to do with uh, zero interest loans, which obviously Everton have from Farad Mashiri. Will this cause any trouble for Everton? You know, will any of this be backdated, or do you think this is just a case of, you know, if if Everton go forward and did have fired Machiri with that loan, they would be in trouble. But because the freaking group are coming in, they should be fine. Well, <laughs> uh, I wish I had a short answer. the The only honest answer is, it might. We don't know, right? Yeah. So. For those who haven't followed this one, I'm not going to get into who won, right? Basically, it was a draw. Yeah. And, and City might have shaded it. Premier League might have shaded it. It really depends on what you think City were trying to achieve. If City were trying to achieve this massive knockout blow ahead of the 115 case, they failed. If they were trying to get their bigger Etihad sponsorship deal through, um, you know, embarrass, tie up the Premier League a little bit, maybe score a few little wins around the court, around the edges... Yeah, yeah, they 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 should they they'll be happy, but you know that's a different story, right? The big win from a sort of competition law point of view, from an embarrassing the Premier League point of view, is this shareholder loan issue. And the short way of thinking of this: if we're going to have rules around associated party transactions, so that is any kind of deal, normally mm. sponsorship deals with someone, a company, a person that you have a link with. If we're going to police those, and we most people agree we should, and the tribunal agreed we should, if, mm. if we're going to have a fair, fair, a financial fair play regime, then we sort of need to, because otherwise it's kind of hidden subsidies and we'll make a mess of the whole thing. If we're going to do that, 
why are we also not looking at like soft loans, zero interest loans, low interest loans from your owner, right? Mm. That are there basically for tax purposes. Um, why aren't we placing that? And the Premier League have known about this for a long time. They kind of sort of talked about it and they've decided not to do anything about it for the justification, which was a bit woolly, that, yeah, but at least that's direct. That's direct. It's not via a third party. It's not sneaky. Man City, short version is they were able to go, that's a nonsense, isn't it? You know, aren't they the same? You know, a subsidy is a subsidy, whether it's hidden or not. And that's a, that's clearly a benefit. And it should, that should be, you know, there should be interest on that. So it should be a cost. So, you know, what, what are we doing here? And the tribunal agreed with them. So at the moment, we're in this limbo where City have successfully had the associated party transaction rules, which came in in December 2021 as a reaction to Newcastle, basically. They've had them declared unlawful. So we're a little bit in limbo. The Premier League feel they can fix this stuff pretty quickly. And theoretically, they can, because whilst Man City got that kind of big win, the, the unlawful, a lot of it, a lot of the a lot of the things they won on were pretty technical and pretty easy to fix. And Premier League certainly think, well, do you know what? We can just go back and we we we'll, we'll, we can amend that. We can amend that. And yeah, sure, yeah, we'll start doing that. Yeah, fine, 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 fine. The shareholder loan one is the tricky one. Hmm. One because it brings in loads of other clubs. You number one. Two. Is it retrospective or not? Man City are saying, well. It has to be a little bit retrospective because you started assessing our sponsorship deals in December 2021, right? You've, you've held some up, you've delayed some. You've got to go back to there, haven't you? And everybody's saying, no, I don't think we do. I think we'll just we'll just start assessing them from the moment we bring the rules in, when we bring them back. I think that's debatable, and I've been talking to lawyers about that. Do you go all the way back to 2013 with the start of the PSL rules, which were post-Portsmouth? Should should we have been ass assessing associated uh, shareholder loans from way back then? No, maybe. But then you get to this argument about well, that's you know that's a bit unfair, isn't it? Because the clubs entered into those loans with the rules mm. as they were at the time, and yeah. you know they might have done something different. They might have just taken it as equity. They might have you know they might have gone out and got a commercial loan. There's lots of you know that's a bit. Unfair. So there is a genuine debate to be had about how retrospective yeah. this is. The second, I think, really key thing here is. The politics. So as everyone, I think, knows, you need two thirds of the Premier League to get rules through, right? 14, 14, basically. Maybe 12 if a couple abstain. And the way things have been over the last year or so is it's been about, it's been kind of City, Newcastle, Chelsea, Everton at times because they've been upset with the Premier League. Mm. Forest because they've been upset. You know, there's been sort of shifting sands, but there's nearly always been your sovereign wealth clubs, Chelsea as this sort of kind of disruptor, multi-club. You know, we don't want to be constrained. The politics have been hard. Now the Premier League is sort of saying we can fix these, we can we can remedy this Man City thing pretty fast. All right, yeah, you probably could do the law bit, but can you get the votes? Mm. And I think the shareholder loan thing and the row about how retrospective is really interesting because if. If Man City are right that you have to backdate it a little bit, you're in trouble. You are. I'm, I'm afraid to say this. You might have to restate your accounts again. Why your, did we? Why did we give evidence then? Even worse. Why did we give evidence for Manchester City if that's the case? It's, it could be one of the great. Well, I'm sorry, a, a massive cell phone. Yeah. You gave evidence because I think you were trying to bloody the Premier League's nose. Yeah. And I think there's a danger that you've you've you brought danger to yourselves you know you yeah. sort of pop house them. i mean look the premier league might be right and you might be absolutely fine hmm. all right we'll, we'll, we'll start we'll start assessing them as, as associated party things and what's the big deal we'll apply a, a market interest rate to them as uefa already do by the way um and don't worry about machinery loans because they're going to go they're just going to go freakings will do it differently they'll put in equity or they'll they'll charge a proper interest rate they you know it's fine um but it's this if it mm. has to be retrospective, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, you've, you've got some, in, you've got some, un, you've got some interest. You're gonna have to add there. You know, you know, so what, it's, pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, right? You'd be 450 million. I know it's not over the. It came in different times, and there'll be different. You, you definitely don't have to apply 10 percent to all mm. of it, but there'll be 
it, it's going to add to your it's going to add to your annual cost. Le- Leicester as well. Mm-hmm. Wolves. There are a couple of other clubs that have borrowed. Bournemouth. I mean, it depends where they are, how close they are on the PSR limit. Yeah. So you suddenly start making the politics of it harder. Yeah. It's just eating itself, isn't it? In many ways, it's just because if it is a PSR breach or whatever, and then points, it's just, it's just, it's just getting so complicated. It really is, isn't there it? Is For no, the- I know Everton fans don't want to hear this. There is no appetite at the Premier League to punish you lot again. <laughs> you know, last, <laughs> but what happened last season happened. Yeah, they don't want to open that up again. Hmm. Good. Well, let's hope they don't then. Um, just on the positive, this and then I'll let you go because you've given me far more time than than you should have. But um, just on the flip side of that, then maybe the positive side of that. Then does this mean that the freakins can come in and give? I mean, I'm not talking like outlandish amounts of money, but could they come in and? One of their companies then can sponsor, you know, have the name and rights for the stadium. If, if again with with this this uh, here and coming to it, because you know they've talked about fair, you know, fair price and stuff. If yeah. if if they say Gulf Toyota um, yeah. gives a fair price, not 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 outlandish, not yeah, stupid, yeah, yeah. but they're the only one in yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. then are they are they free to just get on with that? Well, look, at the moment, Man City say we're in limbo, right? Well, are there any rules? So mm. let's just say if it happened right now, that so a, a good lawyer could say, let's do the deal really fast, right? Mm. I, I think that's not really what's going on. I think we are like in a sort of bit of a gray area that is going to be resolved fairly soon one way or another. I think one definite good bit it, that, that's going to come from this Man City case is we're going to roll back a little bit. I, again, I don't want to add too much complexity here. The Premier League tightened the associated party rules again in February of this year to basically kind of like narrow the band, you know, but club X, i.e. Man City would go, uh, yes, he had want to give us a hundred million and the Premier League would go, well, all right, we're going to get an independent expert. And they've done a range. And they said, if, you, if, it, if it was done normally, it wasn't an associated party, you know, a club of your size selling shirt and stadium, you know, it, it would be between 60 and 70. So we'll let you have 70. What they tried to do in February was sort of almost narrow that a bit. And so there's a gap between what Man City wanted and what the Premier League were willing to give. I think we're going to have to go back a little bit and we're going to make that range a bit wider, which would help a Friedkin, for example, Mm -hmm. coming in and saying, oh, um, I've got a good relationship with Toyota. They want to go front of shirt. They want to go Bramley Moore. Um, I reckon we can get 60, 70 for that, 70 million. The Premier League saying, no, no, I'm not so sure about that. It's 50. All right, maybe we'll give you 60. I mean, look, that, that, it's not quite haggling. It is based mm. on arm's length and fair market. But Man City, I think, could have relaxed the rules a tiny bit for you, loosened them up a, a tad. Uh, well, they, they give with one hand what, well, well, that's on one hand what they've took from another. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, yeah. Oh, it's it's just, I'm, Matt. I'm just grateful you've came on and uh, give us a little bit of update and and um, cleared a few things up for us. Matt Slater from the Athletic. Thank you for joining us on Toffee TV. You're welcome. There you go. Big thanks to Matt. There you can find him at the Athletic, where he uh, obviously is doing a lot around the business side of the game and his life has just been even more complicated by the Manchester City ruling and the the Yara ruling as well. So if you want to uh, hear more from him, you can catch him at The Athletic. Uh, Hopefully he won't be talking as much about Everton. Um, Hopefully, hopefully going forward. So make sure you uh, check him out there if you want to there you go make sure to give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already if you want more great videos join us over on Sophie tv premiere the link is in the description and the qr codes come on the screen now see you later